In a recent video, I showed you how to render out individual render passes and then assemble these to recreate a completed rendering. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to watch it right after you finish this one. I'll have it linked up in the end cards. Anyway, quite a few of you made it clear that you'd like to know more about what you can do with these individual passes in Photoshop to enhance a rendered image. So that's what we're going to do today. And if you want to follow along with today's tutorial, head on over to my website, willgibbons.com, enter your email address at the top of the page, and click sign up to get access to the project files for this tutorial, as well as all the other tutorials I've done in the past. Now, before we jump on into Photoshop, let's take a look at each render pass on its own and understand what information it contains. First up, we have the diffuse pass, which creates an image containing only the diffuse color of all materials in the scene, including labels. The lighting pass creates an image containing only the direct component of lighting in our scene. The global illumination pass creates an image containing only the indirect component of the lighting in our scene. If your GI pass turns out black, it's because you need to enable global illumination in our lighting tab in Keyshot. Next, the caustics pass creates an image containing the lighting from caustics within the scene. If your caustics pass also turns out black, it's either because you've not enabled caustics in the lighting tab in Keyshot, or there are no materials within your scene that result in caustics being rendered. The raw pass just creates an image without any image styles applied to it. The reflection pass creates an image containing the reflections of all reflective materials within your scene. The refraction pass creates an image containing the refractions of all refractive materials within your scene. The shadow pass creates an image containing just the shadows from all light sources within the scene. Both HDRI lighting and physical lights are included in this. The ambient occlusion pass creates an image where unoccluded surfaces are colored white and occluded surfaces are colored black. The clown pass creates an image where each material is displayed as a flat color for easy selection and masking in an image editor like Photoshop or a compositor. The depth pass creates a depth map, which is an image that contains information relating to the distance of surfaces to the camera. The normals pass creates an image where each pixel represents the geometry's orientation using the surface normals within the scene. So now that we have all these passes, what could we possibly do with them? The reason I didn't want to make this video, honestly, is because there are no right or wrong ways to use these passes. And since your final rendering produced by Keyshot already contains the information from each of these passes, you shouldn't need to use render passes. However, if you want to take some creative license to your image and push some values a bit, render passes will make it easier to target specific parts of your image. Now, if you followed along with my earlier video on compositing, you will remember that in order to get the most accurate results, you should be working in 32-bit mode so that the blend modes work correctly. Here we have a layered PSD 32-bit document. First, I will alt drag to duplicate my RGB pass. Remember, this is the rendering we would have ended up with if we rendered out a standard non-layered image out of Keyshot. We'll save the original to compare our changes to later on. The first way we can use render passes is to add depth of field to an image that doesn't have any using a depth pass. Now I have to say, I believe the depth of field produced by Keyshot is both more accurate and better looking than adding it in post. However, we can still take our depth pass and use it to create a focal point and depth of field in our image that was rendered without depth of field. Now the depth pass needs to be tone mapped before we can actually use it. So start by selecting and copying it from your layer stack. We'll create a new document and paste it into the new document. Next, click Image, Adjustments, and HDR Toning. Choose Equalize Histogram to get a full range of pixels based on distance from the camera. Next, copy the entire image and return to the first document. You'll click on the Channels tab and create a new channel and paste the depth pass into it. To actually apply our depth of field though, we need to convert our 32-bit document into a 16-bit document. To do this, we'll go to Image, Mode, 16 bits per channel. 
When given the option, choose to not merge the document. This will leave our individual render passes still available. Now understand that anytime you convert to a lower bit depth, information will be discarded, and this can create a slight shift in the appearance of different layers. That's why I recommend doing all your compositing before this step, and then merge down the composited layers to a single image. This will give you an image to continue editing in 16-bit mode without ruining the result of your composite. Okay, back to the depth of field. Next, we will select Filter, Blur, then Lens Blur. At this point, you should see Alpha 1 as the depth map source. This means it's using the depth pass that we pasted into the alpha channel to decide what parts of our image are closer to the camera. Now we can adjust the iris radius if we need to, to increase the strength of the blur or to decrease it. Then click the part of your image that you want to be in focus. As you click around, the image should update to create different focal points. Experiment with the settings to find the look that you like, and then click OK when you're finished. The second way we can use render passes is to add or subtract an effect to our main image. Now in order to access all the blend modes, your document must be in 16-bit depth mode. I used the depth pass example first since a depth pass has to be in 32-bit mode before we tone mapped it. However, in order to actually apply the depth of field to our image, we had to convert our main document to 16-bit working mode. This is where working in Photoshop becomes very annoying as it's not actually built to fully support a 32-bit workflow. Since our main document is now in 16-bit mode, we have access to all the blend modes. So we're going to use the reflection pass to add and subtract reflected light from our main RGB pass. I'll drag the duplicate RGB pass to the top of the layer stack and then drag the reflection pass on top of that. Once I set the blend mode of the reflection pass to linear dodge add, you will see the image get brighter. Now, if we wanted to subtract reflected light from the duplicate RGB pass instead of adding light to it, we use a different blend mode called linear burn. And essentially you can follow this method of adding or subtracting attributes from your image by grabbing any corresponding render pass, placing it above your image, and then setting the blend mode to either linear dodge add or linear burn in order to add or subtract that effect. Now, if you want to reduce the strength of this effect, the opacity slider can be used on the layer to make the result a little bit more subtle. The third way we can use render passes is to make selections. You're probably already familiar with the magic wand selection tool and the clown pass, which makes it easy to make a selection of a specific part of your image. Now, I like to make this a little bit less destructive by using layer masks and adjustment layers. To make a layer mask, we'll use the magic wand tool and the clown pass to make a selection. Then turn off the clown pass and select our image. Click on the layer mask button below the layer stack to turn that selection into a layer mask. The white area of the mask is visible and the black area is invisible. I'll undo that with Control Z and then add an adjustment layer for exposure above my image. Automatically, the layer mask is applied and you can see when I change the exposure, the effect is only applied to the area within the layer mask. So what's great about this is that the mask can also be edited. Hold Alt and click on the layer mask icon, and then you can use your paintbrush to paint white pixels on the mask. Alt click the layer mask icon again to get out of that preview mode and see the effects that are now applied to the area we just painted. Now the fourth way we can use render passes is to make lighting changes to a scene. We'll use the normals pass to brighten the light coming from one side of our scene. Go ahead and turn on the normals pass and make sure the layer is selected. Go to select, then color range, and use the eyedropper tool to select a color that corresponds to the direction you wish to light from. Adjust the fuzziness slider as needed to dial in our selection. Click OK. Then select your image from the layer stack and add an exposure adjustment layer above it. Once again, a layer mask is automatically applied from our selection we use the color range select tool. We can easily blur this layer mask if needed to soften the effect. 
So the fifth and final way I like to use render passes is to stylize an image to make it easier to read on screen. Now the ambient occlusion pass creates dark shaded areas where two or more surfaces meet. It's not a shadow pass though, since it's not directional and it's not affected by light sources. With this pass, we can set its blend mode to multiply to add contrast to crevices or areas where two surfaces come together. This can be useful for making small details more legible when viewing an image at a lower resolution or on say an e-commerce website or a mobile device. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there are so many ways to use render passes, it's impossible for me to demonstrate all of them. Also, there's a lot I don't know about Photoshop and other software could probably extend the use of these render passes even further. Of course, you can use the brush tool still along with dodge and burn to make further adjustments to your image, but I really didn't want this to become a tutorial on how to use Photoshop. I had to draw the line somewhere. I hope this has been helpful and that you've been able to take this information and apply these techniques to your own images. And that's it, really. Until next time, happy rendering.